Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Calvin here. So recently, my YouTube colleague, Chris Honey Money, got interviewed by Channel News Asia in a podcast titled Money Talks S1E2. He plans to retire at 35 with $1 million in his portfolio, EP2. When this podcast was released, all the haters and naysayers started appearing, just as I suspected. So much so that Chris decided to make a video titled I got roasted for sharing on financial independence retire early on CNA Money Talks podcast. And in that video, I can tell that he was very really fed up with all the negative comments. Come on, nah. come on, man. You think I don't understand inflation? Is it not enough for you or is it not enough for me? And if you think it's not enough for me, do you really know me? Do you really understand how I spend? Do you understand what I spend on? Who are you to judge me again? So Chris, receiving hate comments? First time, in this video, I wanted to react to some of the comments and give my own opinions too. Because you know, infinite monetization loop. But before I start, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button because it will help out with the channel. In return, I will show you a baby fish. Alright, let's start right now. So the first thing that people saw was the title, $1 billion at 35 years old. And as Chris suspected, Many people didn't even bother to listen to the podcast before commenting. The comments were like, definitely not enough. How short does he plan to live? Still long way to go unless he's going to die soon. 1.4 million SGD want to retire? Wah ha 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 ha, nearly fell off my chair xia. But one comment summarized this whole thing perfectly. The fact that a lot of peeps think that he will be retiring using that $1 million alone suggests that our collective financial literacy is much lower than we think. Of course, if you are just having $1 million in cash, it's definitely not enough to retire at 35. How are you going to survive on just $1 million for 40 to 50 years of your life? Even if you manage to win the $8 million lottery, if you start at managing your money, you will still go bankrupt. But thankfully, there are some people who knew what's up. Like this guy. It's not $1 million in cash. It's $1 million in portfolio. Okay, if you are blur blur how that works, let me explain. So, it's basically using something called the 4% rule. Where as long as your portfolio grows by more than 4%, if you are only withdrawing 4% from your portfolio, you will technically have unlimited money. Because Stunks. This 4% rule came from a study called the Trinity Study, which tested different withdrawal rates from different portfolio allocations over different periods. And they found that if you only withdraw 4% from your portfolio, there's a 95% chance that you will never run out of money. But of course, past data doesn't guarantee future performance. That's why if you're only relying on your portfolio alone to retire, it's better to reduce your withdrawal rate to 3% or even 2.5% to increase the chance of success so that you will never run out of money. And for Chris, even if he stops working altogether, it's definitely doable because he mentioned that his expense is only 1k per month. So if you do a quick math, even with a 2.5% withdrawal rate, he will still get 2k to use every month, which is still way more than enough to live on. Then someone be like, he will realize he can't retire, especially if he want to marry and have kids. If you have a kid, 5x that. Definitely do not have kids. First of all, Chris mentioned that he's not planning to have kids yet. But even if he ends up having kids, either intentionally or unintentionally, it's still doable with $1 million portfolio. How I know? Because I'm something of a father myself. In one of my earlier videos, I have shown that kids' expenses, when divided between two parents, is about $590 every month. And that was when I was still sending my kid to a nanny that cost about $1,000 a month. Now that my kid has gone to childcare, the kid expenses have actually dropped by more than half because childcare cost is actually quite cheap in Singapore and even cheaper if you factor in all the subsidies. So yes, I would say that a $1 million portfolio is more than enough to retire at 35 and with kids too, assuming that you know how to manage your finances properly. But otherwise, may God bless you. Ah. Quick pause, Webook is a new stockbroker that lets you trade stocks for a low fee of $0. They also have fractional shares, which lets you buy stocks with even just $5 Hongbao money. Right now, Webu has upgraded their latest sign-up promotion. 
If you sign up, deposit at least $2,000, then make 6 buy trades on either US stocks, ETFs, or options, you will receive up to $120 worth of Microsoft shares. This promotion ends on August 1st. So if you are interested, you can sign up with my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. There was also a comment which mentioned, portfolio can not dive in sudden market changes and force with cut loss situations. Yes, that's a problem if Chris is planning to do nothing after retirement, like sit in his house like a lazy bum bum and watch Mediacorp all day long, which would be boring in so many ways. Chris is still planning to continue making videos as a YouTuber, which will help pay for his living expenses. And believe it or not, he's going to earn even more money from his YouTube compared to his day job because YouTube income has no ceiling. But let's assume that Chris is super unlucky. Maybe his investments all go to zero and his YouTube fails, which can definitely happen, yeah? Even if that happens, he still has his CPF, which he has already hit the full retirement sum. So basically, he already has a safety net waiting for him when he becomes an old apex. Add to the fact that by the time he retires, he will have at least 10 years working experience the experience of being a tutor and the experience of being a YouTuber. With all these skills and experience, he can easily find a job, easy busy, no problem. So in short, he is very well prepared to retire with $1 million by 35 years old. The second biggest criticism I saw was that he doesn't enjoy life. Like this comment, and yeah, this sound like one dude who screamed and saved everything, then just before 35, he died. Just eat leftovers at hawkers every day. If we put forever alone and every day chai peng enough la. Now, of course, I don't live with him. So I don't know if he enjoys his life or not, yeah? But judging from his videos and what he said during the podcast, it does sound like he is enjoying his life. He mentioned that he still eats at restaurant every month. And in one of his videos, he talks about Ikigai, where he's being paid to do something that he likes to do. So yeah, I think it's safe to assume that he's enjoying his life and not eating leftovers at hawker centers. But one thing to remember, this is a personal choice, right? Chris is definitely not asking you to go retire at 35. And he's definitely not planning to be your financial analyst, if that's what you're concerned about. Everyone has different priorities in life. Some people feel the need to enjoy life by spending all their money because they are worried that they will not live long enough to enjoy their money. They spend all their money on expensive cars, upgrade to an expensive condo, eat nice food, wear nice clothes. If that's what makes you happy, good for you. For people who are chasing fire, like Chris or even me, we are totally satisfied with living a simple lifestyle. And my new haul, I do spend money on date nights, movie, travel, and kid outings. So it's not like I'm not enjoying life, huh? It's about being smart on your spendings, save the rest so that the future you can get to enjoy life. Then there was a comment which says, sacrifice so much to save $1 million which you can't even bring along when you meet your maker. Enjoy life as much while you can. You would be surprised to find that actually there are a lot of people who have to work till old age not because they enjoy working but because they need the money. Last year, there was a study which found that Singaporeans are the world's unhappiest workers, with half of the people saying that they are unhappy in their workplace. Many people from other countries feel the same too. So my question would be, where would you find more enjoyment? Would you enjoy working at a job that you possibly hate till 65? You can't quit because you need the money. Or would you find more enjoyment if you have the freedom to quit anytime you want and pursue your passion? I did a quick poll to find out what people wanted to do if they don't have to work for money. Only a small percentage of people would continue working because they really like their job. Most of the people want to travel the world while they still can, which is exactly Chris' plan. He wants to become a digital nomad, whatever that means. It's definitely not easy to retire in your 30s. People who can achieve that spend a lot of time optimizing their expenses. Like Chris researching which is the best card for his expenses and how to do credit card stacking to earn the most rewards. But of course, saving money can only get him so far. If you go Gable Chris LinkedIn, he graduated in 2015, which means he plans to achieve $1 million in just around 
10 short years. Do you know how hard it is to earn $1 million in just 10 years? Like you literally have to earn 100 k every year on average. To do that, you have to put in an insane amount of work to earn as much money as you can in as little time as possible. Basically, you have to squeeze in 40 years of hard work to just 10 short years, which is hard but definitely doable. For Chris, he taught tuition as an undergraduate because it pays him well. And now, he's making YouTube videos in his free time. Then on top of that, with all the money he has, he needs to research how to get the best returns on his investments. Otherwise, his money will just sit there, do nothing like a lazy bum bum. All this shows that unless you are very motivated, it's very unlikely that you will earn enough to retire in your 30s. Unless you win the lottery, of course. Finally, I just want to say this. The time that we have on Earth feels long, but it's actually very short. It's important that we enjoy what we do. Otherwise, it will be a very unfulfilling life. For me, the reason I want to retire early is because I feel that life has a lot more to offer than just work work till old age. Like pursuing your passion, traveling the world, or even do crazy stuff like start a YouTube channel. But to be even able to do all that comes down to one thing, being able to achieve financial independence and retire as early as possible. Anyway, that's my reaction to all the comments about Chris retiring with $1 million by 35 years old. I've left all the links down below for you to check out. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.